What you desire desires you. A calm and confident approach is essential in achieving it. This conversation is based on a video we discussed last Thursday about self-confidence. And we are also connecting it to our previous discussion on Neville Goddard's teachings from last Sunday. Neville spoke about being the cause of our own reality, stating that everything we need or desire is already ours. We don't require external assistance. It is within our possession. By imagining and feeling our wishes fulfilled, we can manifest them into existence. Once we fully accept the desired outcome, we become indifferent to the possibility of failure because the acceptance of the end goal naturally leads to the means of achieving it. When we finish our moment of prayer, it is as if we have witnessed the successful end of a play without being shown how it was achieved. Despite any potential obstacles, we will remain calm and confident, knowing that the desired outcome has been clearly defined. Through personal experiences and conversations with others who have pursued their goals and visions. We have come to understand the power of accepting the desired outcome, which aligns with Neville's teaching. Neville also suggests that prayer, similar to sleep, is an entry point to the subconscious mind. When we don't consciously know how to reach our goals, such as in businesses or relationships. It's important to recognize the influence of our self-identification as I am. By affirming our desired identity and connecting with the powers within our subconscious mind, we can bring it into existence. As Steve Jobs mentioned in his commencement speech, we can connect the dots looking backward. Understanding our unique way of achieving our goals and sharing it with others. Trusting the process and having faith are crucial aspects of this journey. Prayer, like sleep, creates a state of relaxation and receptivity in the mind, making it more open to internal suggestions. We achieve calmness of mind, as James Allen beautifully expressed in his book, As a Man Thinketh. Calmness is a precious gem resulting from self-control and observations of our self-identifications and alignments with our visions. In this present moment, everything exists. Revealed by our conscious and unconscious self-identifications as I am, by imagining ourselves already at the desired end point, we engage in a form of prayer. Prayer, as Naville described, is an illusion of sleep that reduces the influence of the external world and makes the mind more receptive to internal suggestions. Our prayerful states allow us to tap into the power of imagination, where we assume the identity of the person who has already achieved the desired outcome. By assuming this identity, we activate the subconscious mind, which rearranges reality to reflect our imagination. The power lies in believing that our prayers have already been answered, as stated in Mark 11, 24. The journey requires faith and the ability to recognize the distinctive pathway of our vision. We trust the process, as Matthew 6, 6 suggests, by entering into our own private space of prayer and connecting with our Father in secrets. 
we understand that our conscious identification as I am shapes our reality and we can apply this to any experience we desire. Living in the present moment, we recognize that our external experience are the results of the past imaginal acts. We can choose to identify with anything we desire and imagine, as long as it aligns with the truth of our vision. By valuing the journey and seeing it as integral to the destination, we discover more about ourselves. As Naville emphasizes, our prayers must be answered when we assume the feeling of already possessing our objectives. This can be done instantly by transcending the evidence of our five senses and realizing that our current experiences are shaped by past imaginal acts. By assuming the feeling of our wish fulfilled, we activate the subconscious mind which orchestrates its realization. The art of prayer and manifestation lies in the ability to consistently hold the feeling and belief of already having what we desire. This requires a discipline and practices as our thoughts and emotions can easily be swayed by external circumstances. Neville teaches that the key to successful prayer is to feel the reality of our wish fulfilled in the present moment. It's not about wishing for something to happen in the future, but rather embodying the state of already having it now. These feelings of fulfillment generate a powerful vibration that attracts circumstances, people, and opportunities that align with our desired outcome. In order to cultivate this feeling, Neville suggests using the technique of mental imagery. We can create a vivid mental pictures of ourselves in the desired situation, engaging over our senses and emotions to make it as real as possible. By immersing ourselves in this imagery repeatedly, we strengthen our belief and conviction that it is already a part of our reality. Moreover, Neville emphasizes the importance of faith and trust in the process. It is natural for doubts and fears to arise, especially when we encounter setbacks or challenges. However, faith is the unwavering belief that what we have imagined and felt as true will manifest in the physical realm. By maintaining this unwavering faith, we can overcome any obstacles and stay aligned with our desired outcome. It's worth noting that manifesting our desires may not always unfold in the exact way we imagined or expect. The universe has infinite ways of bringing our desires to fruition. And sometimes it may present itself in some unexpected ways. As we trust the process and remain open to possibilities, we allow the universe to work its magic and orchestrate the perfect circumstances for our desire to manifest. In summary, the act of prayer and manifestation, as taught by Navi Goddard, revolves around assuming the feeling of our wish fulfilled in the present moment. Through vivid mental imagery, faith and trust, we align ourselves with the reality we desire. By consistently embodying the state and allowing the universe to unfold the journey, we can manifest our desire and live a life of fulfillment. Sometimes, when we reflect on our past experiences and connect the dots, we can see how things have unfolded. This retrospective understanding becomes easier 
when we have many reference experiences. However, even without such experiences, it is perfectly fine to surrender completely to the belief that what we desire also desires us. As we embark on this journey, whether it is the first night or a few nights into it, I recall when I learned about the power of auto-suggestions and affirmations from Think and Grow Rich. I would faithfully read my affirmations in the morning and before bed. Eventually, everything fell into place. What I realized is that you continue this practice until you no longer feel the need to do so. At this point, you simply assume that your desire will manifest somehow, some way. You have a deep knowing that it will happen because you can feel it within you. This feeling is what Neville Goddard refers to when he says that when your feeling is in conflict with your wish, the feeling will ultimately prevail. The dominant feeling will always express itself. To enter this feeling state, you must recognize that you are already the person you desire to be. You imagine it, think it, and affirm it to yourself. Whatever it may be, you immerse yourself into the feeling and maintain it. If doubts, indecisions, or fear-based thoughts arises, you rise above them. It's okay to have those thoughts, but you release yourself from identifying with them. Having a thought process like that allows you to be more in flow. Another aspect I prioritize is being in a state of flow. When you make flow a priority, it becomes easier to surrender your wishes and visions. You no longer feel the need to force or push them. Instead, you harmonize with them throughout the day. Even if you encounter what might be perceived as rejection, you approach it with a light-hearted attitude. You don't react or unconsciously identify with thoughts like it's not meant for me or I will be abandoned. You acknowledge that these things are just interpretations stemming from identifications and they don't have to hold you back from achieving what you desire. Aim for a more flow-based, calm, day-to-day -day journey. This way, if challenges arise, you can see beyond the evidence of the five senses and you recognize them as opportunity in harmony and contributing to your vision. I trust that you have found this video helpful for your goal, visions, and desire. Let's conclude with auto suggestions. I am the conduct of divine expression and true calmness and yielding, which becomes easier each day. I am able to manifest things into existence more effortlessly and quickly. I intuitively know what I do and what not to do, guided by my internal intuition. I effortlessly maintain the flow and embrace the end results. I recognize that my vision is a present fact in my imagination. And thus, my imagination expresses itself as a sensory experience. It was so in the past, it is so now, and it shall be in the future. Therefore, I am my vision now. What I identify with and affirm as I am draws upon both known and unknown ways to bring my vision into reality. 
I draw upon the feeling of internal peace, love, and calm. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best.